Hello and welcome to the Pro Tipster Weekend Preview. We have some Premier League, Championship and some of the best of European football to talk about as well. I'm Pro Tipster Paddy, I'm here with Pro Tipster Dan. How's it going? Um, could be better. I'm watching Boeing City lose again last night. Again, night's. again, again. Well, we're going to talk about them again today. <laughs> Both teams to score no. Yeah, it's probably going to be the bet, huh? Mm-hmm. Uh, look, let's start, start off then with the game of the weekend. Liverpool are playing Chelsea. Liverpool in fifth, Chelsea in third. Liverpool are going to be reeling after their, um, what's, what's that nice word people use now when something falls apart? Oh, all the football journalists are using it. Capitulate. Capitulation. Capitulation. Like narrative. Narrative was last year's word. This year's word is capitulation. Yeah. Football hipsters. Expect, um, anyway. Expect the goals. <laughs> expect the goals. Yeah, you're dead right. Yeah. See, Jeff Stelling was given out about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah I agree with him as well. Um, we're getting, no, no, we're getting sidetracked. Liverpool and Chelsea. Uh, Chelsea are probably going to win this, aren't they? Um, you would think so. The, the, the big problem they've got is they were in Azerbaijan. Uh, playing um, Karabaya, um last night. Is it last, it's last night, mm-hmm. wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, they were they're in Azerbaijan um, playing Karabaya last night. Liverpool have got an extra day's rest. I know a lot of Chelsea fans aren't happy about that because yeah, you know they're never happy. Well, no, of course they're not happy. <laughs> um, but I know Chelsea rested a few players. Um, you know, I, I, they they didn't play with the striker against mm-hmm. Karabaya and still stuck four past them. Liverpool showed that going forward they're great. You know, Sane's fantastic. Coutinho, Firmino, you know, you can see why Storage can't get in the team, but at the back, oh my word. With Matip out, you've got Clavan and Lovren at the back and they just not well, I, I will repeat I feel for Dajan Lovren because he's not fit. Mm. He's still playing through injury. Um there's no way Clavan's good enough for the Premier League. I'm surprised. Um, I w- I'm surprised that he's still playing Gomez at right back. I would have thought he'd shift him into central defence and bring in Alexander Arnold at yeah. right back, mm. and maybe he will um, against Chelsea. But they play, they defend like that against Chelsea. They're going to get murdered because mm. Hazard, Hazard was brilliant against Carabao. You know, mm. Morata, Morata can do nothing for 90 minutes and then score a header. You know, he's just brilliant. You got to keep an eye on him, keep your concentration. Um, the handicap though, right? The handicap's been set at Liverpool minus uh, 0.25 at 1.84. So Chelsea plus 0.25 at uh, 2.03. No, I thought it should have been the other way. Like well, Liverpool have been given a home advantage here, even though the head to heads, uh, they've only won one out of the last five or something like that. And they, t- they tend to be draws most of these matches at Anfield. Mm. I would pile on Chelsea in that respect. Mm-hmm. Um, as I said, the only issue is the, the fact they had to fly back from, from Azerbaijan, from Baku. Um, but this is modern football. Uh, I know Conte's not happy about it. I know Chelsea aren't happy about it. But I think they've got the squad to handle it. Mm. I think they, they can rest, um, they can bring Morata back in. Um, there are a couple other changes I think they can make. They'll be fine. Yeah, William probably won't start. Hazard had a great game the other day, so. Hopefully he's coming back to his best because because uh, I've stuck with him in my fantasy team and he's not been delivering but but he's he's worth so much money I don't know what to do with him so we're going with a Chelsea win then probably overs overs was one point seven one over two over over three point five is two point six nine uh, I'm not seeing much value there no, to be honest because value there. with so many draws over recent years I don't know if I'd be going with that now uh, let's move on then to another. Uh, Premier League match. Uh, Spurs are at home to West Brom. West Brom managerless. Maybe they'll have a point to Pardew by the time this comes out. Um, look, overall, Spurs, the form is six wins, two draws, two losses. West Brom, zero wins, four draws, and six losses. So it's Spurs are just going to hammer them here, aren't they? It's going to be interesting how West Brom react to Pulis going. Um, because I think Pulis have bombed... Think they're going to start playing tiki-taka football? <laughs> Maybe not tiki-taka football, but Pulis have bombed out players. Like, Nasser Chadley was, mm. like, injured a lot. Yeah. Um, but I don't think he actually was injured. Um, it'd be interesting to see um, if the squad change, if the match day squad changes significantly against Spurs. I don't think it will. And, of course, they've got what, Gary Megson in interim charge. I can see the Albion fans at the moment shaking their heads going, why God, why? And I know lots of them aren't happy with party, the idea of party either. 
Um, I looked on a West Brom for Who do they want? Um, they want... I mean, with that McGuinness fellow we spoke about on the yeah, podcast. Gra- yeah, Grant Potter, mm-hmm. um, McInnes, and the one they really want, and they're never going to get in a month of Sundays, is Thomas Tuchel. That Thomas Tuchel isn't going, isn't going to West Brom. <laughs> you know, that's not going to happen. He'd want money, he'd want the big club. Can't see it, Baggies fans. Sorry, but, no. It'd be great. Um, would he? I, probably. He probably would be. I mean, Klopp's not done a bad job since he's come over. Mm. Uh, Wagner's done a decent job. The Norwich guy, I've been impressed with. Um, so, yeah. Mm. But, um. Do you see, uh, the handicaps minus, uh, Spurs minus a goal and a half, 1.82. Do you think they, they, they beat that? Um, so that, that's to win by two or more. Yeah. yeah I, I think they, they should be able to do that. Mm. Okay. Uh, Burnley are playing Arsenal on Sunday. Burnley 7th. Feels great saying that Burnley are seventh, I have to say, and Arsenal are sixth. So let me give you overall form. Uh, Burnley have five wins, four draws, and a loss. Uh, Arsenal, uh, six wins, one draw, three losses. Uh, the odds are Burnley, six, uh, 4.28 for the draw, 1.55 for Arsenal to win. Um, I think Arsenal could get a bit stuck here. Um, well, uh, we're recording on Thursday. Arsenal play tonight, mm. um, although it will be their Europa League squad tonight. Um, Wayne Cologne, isn't it? Tonight? Yeah, yeah um, that's right. I would be so tempted to look at the uh, the uh, handicaps and maybe go for Burnley because so. Burnley is plus one at one point nine four. Burnley at home, Burnley at Turf Moor is not the easiest place to play mm. at all. You know, as we found in the Premier League, you know, Burnley's home form in the Premier League has been decent, like since they've been up. Yeah, Arsenal. Maybe they're coming back to their best. You know, that win over Spurs will have done done them wonders. Um, when you've got Ozil, Lacazette, Sanchez playing together, playing on fire, then yeah, they're great, but. He's trying to put them on fire, it's, it's the hard Yeah, thing. yeah, th- that's, yeah. that's the issue, and I think against the Burnley side, this can be set up to deny them space, yeah. to, um, just frustrate them. I'd be looking at Burnley, I'd, I, I would be interested to see what the lineups are gonna be. Um, I mean, obviously, Wenger, I think, has got this slight rotation between European League, Europa League, and Premier League squad working quite well. But I think that sometimes um, Arsenal fans want that, you know, like some of them I know want Wilshire to be in the team. It's also about injuries, although Mustafi coming back has probably made a hell of a lot of difference mm. as well to Arsenal. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm tempted by Burnley's handicap there. Tempted. Right, we'll move on then to the Championship. Uh, we have three matches from the Championship. We'll start with uh, your least favourite team in the world, Aston Villa, their fourth playing ninth, Ipswich. Uh, let me give you some form. Uh, Villa's overall form, seven wins, one draw, two losses. Ipswich, three wins, two draws, five losses. The odds are 1.6 for Villa to win, 3.85 for draw, 5.78 for Ipswich. You know my rules. I can't. I can't see that. Can't say their name. <laughs> can't predict them to win. Um, it's it's a tough one because Steve Bruce has. I, I this is gritted teeth. Now. <laughs> Steve Bruce has done a wonderful job. David Beckham. I know one thing for Miami. He's new Frank yeah, Cross. Take that. him. Take him. Take him. <laughs> please. Um. Yeah. That. But um, they have got issues because Kodja has um, like he he uh, came off with um, an ankle knock against us actually in the derby and he's out he's knackered yeah. for a, a while and I know they need someone up front and um, sorry uh, sorry but they've got no money <laughs> um, they can I I have been reliably told they've they've got a sell to buy in the window so um, I'll be looking at over two and a half goals um, on the podcast. On, uh, was it Wednesday? Um, to, uh, on Tuesday. Came out on, we recorded Tuesday night, released Wednesday morning. Yeah, I, I said, uh, switch over. Yeah. And I was right. Yeah. Yeah, and I would go overs again. Yeah, so the, their overall, with overs then, is 6 out of 10 for Villa and 8 out of 10 for Ipswich. Uh, home versus away form though, it's 5 overs at home out of 10 for Villa, but 8 for Ipswich. So uh, an overs is one point nine one. You you take that, yeah? Yeah, I would take that. Yeah, yeah, I would take that for sure. Okay, good stuff. Uh, next up then the championship. We have first place Wolves are taking on poor old Bolton who are stuck down at twenty third. Um, put your mortgage on Wolves. <laughs> they are, they look phenomenal. So look, I'll start off with the handicap then. The handicap set at Wolves minus one point two five at one point eight. I'd even push that. I'd go at minus one point five. Yes, so, so would I. What, what, you'd get over evens then. 
Well, Wolves look phenomenal. Mm. Um, they, they don't belong in the championship. Nuno, Nuno Santo has got them playing fantastic football. They've, they've got some really quality players. And again, it pains me because I don't like them very much. But yeah, put your house on Wolves to win. Mm. Mm. Um, because Bolton ain't getting nothing. No, overs is at 1.8. That's what, that's only landed in 5 out of 10 uh, matches for both, actually. So, I don't know if I'd be going with that. But then again, the odds are spot on then when you're taking bookies commissions yeah. and stuff like that. So, you're not getting value, but it's, it's the proper price. Um, yeah, w- Wolves, same for me, man. I, they've been doing well. A couple of bets I've had on them, you know, since, uh, since I saw how well they were doing, uh, they'll probably be up in the Premier League, uh, as long as they don't get hit by a load of injuries or anything. Uh, another one chasing promotion and Sheffield United in third are playing your boys Birmingham who are also rooted to the bottom. Don't get me started. Here's a stat for you. In nine Birmingham City away games this season, we've scored three times. We've conceded 19, <laughs> six goals in the first 15 minutes. Ugh, ouch. Yeah, so um, Sheffield United to score first is definitely a bet to go for. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sheffield United to score in the first half is definitely a bet to go for. Sheffield United to win, put your house on it. Um, okay, so... It, well, the win is 1.62, it's probably a bit low. The, the handicap, so Sheffield United minus 1 over evens, 2.1. Take it, take yeah. it. Um, I know Sheffield United lost 5-4 to Fulham, which was a, I, I, an oh, amazing a game. Mental match, yeah. yeah amazing yeah, yeah. game, but um, I watched the goals, I, I was on the train. I watched the goals at least between Birmingham City and Middlesbrough and um like the first goal was a uh was a long range effort from uh from uh was it Fabio I think? Uh no Downing. And and Kuschak, the polling goal. The polling goal. <laughs> um, he, he just parries it in the air. Yeah. Like like just like up in the air in his six yard box and the summer belong was like thank you very much I'll have that <laughs> there's no defending and then the second goal Fabio just clips the ball over and, and I kind of feel sorry for Robertson Dean because they, they got a lot of stick for it but I thought they actually held their line well but the summer belong was just like straight through thank you very much I'll have that Boeing City don't look like scoring there's more injuries David Davis who's um, skipping the side although I don't even think he should be in it got injured last night um they're not going to stay up, are they? At this moment in time, it's... I, I'll, I'll tell you what. Steve Carshaw has been in charge of seven games and they're already calling for his head. I um, never wanted him... Oh, I never wanted Harry Redknapp either, to be right. fair. I never wanted Gianfranco Zola even. So, you know, it's it's just been a... a capitulation <laughs> this year. Um, it, it really has. We've won twice in away from home in 2017. There's a reason for that. Let me give you the overs stats. So overall, Sheffield United have had ten out of ten or seven out of ten overs. Uh, Birmingham only one, and home versus away form then four out of ten overs. Sheffield United and only two. At Birmingham. Yeah. So I mean, what it comes down to is, are Sheffield United going to score three goals? Yeah, it's kind of like like if if they get two, will they stop or will they want to go for more? Yeah. You know? Um. I mean, I, don't don't get me wrong. People are probably thinking, how can you talk about your own team like that? But <laughs> it is painful, but this is this is this is it. And three hundred and ninety nine Birmingham City fans were in Middlesbrough last night and I feel for each and every one of them. Right. Fair play to them for yeah. going. Long, long way yeah. and for what? Um, you know, um uh, our next few games, Sheffield United, Wolves. Oh, it's demoralizing. Okay, next up we have the Ruhr Derby in Germany in the Bundesliga where 5th place Dortmund are taking on 2nd place Schalke. So this one, yeah, this is a meaty match. There's loads of yellow cards, red cards, the whole lot. But form go- goes out the window many, many times in, the, in, this, in this match. Right? In derbies in general, I suppose. And Dortmund are pretty bad at the moment. I was going to say, that's good news to Dortmund. They've lost 5 in a row, haven't they? Mm. Um, yeah, like, if you just look to this without looking at it as derby, you think Schalke win all day long. Schalke have, I think, won four on the bounce. Dortmund have lost five on the bounce. Dortmund, um, against Spurs, you know, took the lead, fell apart. Yeah. Uh, Obama Yang, I think, won out. They've, they've got a few issues. See, he didn't even celebrate the other day. I think that was a bit childish. No. 
Yeah, I think he wants, I think he's realised he's come to the end of his Dortmund career and mm. like he wants to move now. Yeah, but no one, no one wanted him during the summer. He thought he was getting this big move to Real Madrid or Barcelona and they didn't bother. There was a Chinese team in for him. Yeah. And he decided against it then. Well, I, th- I think it, what it comes down to is, is, is Dortmund are going to want 60, 70 million easily. Um, I read something about the Neymar transfer, like just distorting transfer fees totally. Yeah. Because, you know, you're paying 200 million for Neymar all of a sudden. Um, like Morata's worth sixty million, Coutinho's mm. worth one hundred and twenty-five. Like West Hulan must be at least one hundred and fifty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, th- I think on the current markets we're worth a couple of million each. <laughs> but yeah, I, it's, I, I think Aubameyang will go to China personally um, because yeah, he's a great striker, but I can't see European teams paying out the money for him. No, and. China. For, with you know discipline issues and stuff as well, it's like buying. Well, it's not as not as not as much of a chance as buying Balotelli, but it's kind of in that in that as well, you know. Uh, let me give you some odds. So Dortmund one point seven seven to win, draw four point oh one, Schalke four point two seven. The handicap Dortmund minus zero point seven five one point nine six. Overs is, is bad though. Overs is one point five four because it's been landing so often. At Dortmund's home. Um, you'd be, uh, Schalke or a draw, you know. You say Dortmund, Dortmund minus not yeah, yeah, yeah. So Dortmund, Dortmund favourites. Yeah. Oh, Schal- Schalke then. Schalke with a handicap. Schalke mm. to win or draw. Every uh, all all day, all day, every day. That's, I, I think it'll be a draw. Um, I know that Schalke have not beaten Dortmund in the league at Dortmund since 2012, but. Records might be broken. Exactly, it has to be, has to, has to be broken sometime. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll move on into the last match. Uh, second place Valencia are taking on first place Barcelona in La Liga. Messi was rested uh, last night uh, against Juventus. He came on eventually and didn't really do that. God, it was an awful match. It's like pulling teeth. But um, uh, yeah, Valencia are in fantastic form, and you know oh, you'd love to see them getting one over. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I, I, as someone who can't abide the Barcelona Real Madrid hegemony in Spain anyway, yeah, I'm all for Valencia, like um, doing them over, won nine in a row. But Barcelona haven't lost haven't lost a yeah. game mm-hmm. since August, yeah. when they lost three 0 to Real Madrid. Mm-hmm. So yeah, um, in the league they haven't lost since last season because it was Malaga last season, so they lost about the Real in one cup, wasn't it? Super cup, yeah. 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 So the long old record uh, overs is awful, one point four three. Even though it's only landed in seven out of ten home and uh, six out of ten away for Barca, over three point five is two point oh nine pointless. Well, the handicap though, Valencia plus half a goal at one point nine nine might be worth it. Mm. I mean, I. It should be Barcelona's win. Barcelona are that strong. Of course, you know, they risked Messi midweek. They mm. did that for a reason because they knew they could. Um, but I was watching the analysis on, on, on Irish TV after the match yesterday and they were complaining about Barcelona that they didn't see anyone coming up through the ranks. Iniesta is nearly gone. He's on his last legs, as good and all as he is. Suarez is 31 now. Messi, what's going on with Messi's contract? He always does this. He always waits until the last moment with his contract. But still, he's he's aging, you know. He's, he can't have that much longer left. PK is old. The, the only young lads in the team now are, that are quality are Ter Stegen and um, <coughs> Rakitic. Other than that, I mean, they have Delefeo playing as a striker. What's that? Delefeo, maybe he wasn't good enough for Everton. No. And this sign Dembele as well. Yeah, Dembele's, Dembele's still out though. But he'll come back, oh, he and he's only twenty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's money yeah. Dembele. Um, I suppose they will probably get Coutinho next year, then next summer. But Coutinho's not that young. I think he's twenty-four, twenty-six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it's an interesting thought, and he's very old. I, I think Coutinho's fiercely overrated. I don't think he's good. I think this is the problem with Real Madrid. Like you look at their side, and it's full of old players. Yeah. Who they, you know? And I think they've struggled to bring through younger ones. Um, one of the problems when you have a uh, all conquering side for a few seasons is it's very hard for young players to get in, so you end up with this gap. Yeah. And yeah. like when the all conquering side like finish, like you, you, what what do you do then? Yeah. And I think it's one of the hardest things to do is to be able to continually filter mm-hmm. younger players into a team and like maybe filter out some of the older ones and filter. One of the managers I admire most of being able to do this is actually Wenger. 
Um, you look at Arsenal's team, and the, the, they have brought through their own players quite successfully. And I, I suppose Manchester United used to be able to do it fairly well. Yeah. I think Man City are starting to do it now. Because mm-hmm. you look at their team, um, Gabriel Jesus is 20, Sané's 21, 22, mm-hmm. I think. Um, They've, they've, they've got, and they've got young players coming through, but they're also, like, like, like they did against Feyenoord, they're giving players like Phil Foden who's 17, they're mm-hmm. giving him a go, mm-hmm. they're giving Brahim Diaz a go, they've, they've got a list of these players they want to bring through, yeah. and yeah, okay, some of them might not make you like Ihe Nacho, but 25 million in the bank, yeah, thank exactly. you very much. Yeah. Right. Pro tips are done, we'll uh, finish up here. Thanks everyone for joining us, I hope you like this video, make sure and hit the red subscribe button. We need this to get daily tips videos, previews, strategy videos, and podcasts as well. This will be podcasted too. I'll put it out as soon as it's edited. What else? Any other reminders? Yeah, go to protipster.com where you can earn real money by sharing your winning football tips. All right then. I've been Pro Tips to Paddy. Good luck.